All right. Th thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for coming again for um, for another conference in relation to this matter. Uh, there's a number of uh, reasons I just asked you to come back today. Um, first up is to basically formally release the victim's name and provide you with a photograph. Uh, the victim's name is uh, surname Lutherboro. L U T H E R B O R R O W. Christian names Colin Edgar. Colin Edgar Lutherboro, 36 years. And uh, as I say, we have a photograph here which we can provide to you afterwards, and uh, we can do that electronically if need be. Uh, the other, another uh, reason for this morning is to um, clear up some misunderstandings that would appear to have occurred in the media overnight, and uh, just to get it on the record that. Um, the investigation to date has not found any evidence whatsoever that the victim is involved in luring underage children into prostitution or pornography. There's been no evidence whatsoever to suggest that the victim is a pedophile or that he's been involved in any sex offences. Uh, the family are um, quite distraught about what's been reported overnight and I reiterate that uh, the investigation has found no evidence whatsoever to suggest this. Um, the other reasons for the uh, conference today is to, again, just ask for public um, assistance. The investigation would suggest that the victim was a fairly reclusive sort of person, a bit of a loner, lived at home. Um, we would be asking, uh, now that the photograph's available, we would be asking uh, any member of the public who knows the victim. Um, the victim and his mother have only lived on the Gold Coast since last August, and we would be asking any member of the public who knows the victim at all, um, had any dealings with him whatsoever, to uh, contact police or crime stoppers. This will assist us in building up a bit of a picture of his background, a bit of a picture of his life, and. Uh, particularly since he got on the Gold Coast. We're also interested in hearing from any member of the public who travelled um, Hooker Boulevard between the Gold Coast Highway and Bermuda Street at any time between 2am and 2.30am on the morning of Wednesday the 20th of July. So that's whether or not they saw anything suspicious, um, just anybody that travelled that road between those times. We'd like them to come forward to police also. Where was uh, the victim from? Uh, he came, um, what, um, since before, New before, he before the, Gold the Gold Coast? Uh, he came from uh, down south in New South Wales. Where from? From Yamba. Yes. Um, look, I don't think it really matters what it was for. It was all minor matters. He's got virtually no criminal history in Queensland. Um, and he has some uh, minor criminal history in New South Wales, going back over quite a number of years. Yeah, this sex crime is not even a crime involved. There is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that he's committing any, he has committed any sexual offences. So have we been able to piece together what direction even this man is walking or where he's potentially come from? Look, the... Um, one of the difficulties we're having at the moment is filling in that gap from the time that he left home, which was around about the 9 o'clock mark, um, until he was located on Hooker Boulevard. So um, we, we are looking for assistance to try to fill that gap in at this point in time. So we're not exactly sure what he did during those number of hours. Which suburb did he come from? Um, Mermaid Waters, I think it is. So it was close to his home that he was uh, Not far away. What did he do for work? Right. He was unemployed. You say he was sort of a recluse. Was it unusual for him to be out you know, amongst people or whatever at this sort of time of moment? Uh, no, not exceptionally unusual, no. Um, he was just a, a quiet sort of person. But he, but he did get out of there. What did he tell when he left home? What was he doing? No. Did he tell no. that you were all No. Was he on foot or anything? He left on foot. That was about nine, nine o'clock. Yes. 
What about suggestions of an execution style film? Well, that's something again that the media has uh, has, has um, uh, brought up. There is again no evidence to suggest that this was an execution style killing. That brings up all sorts of uh, of um, vision. Um, you know, again, the media reported yesterday they'd been shot three times in the back. That I told you yesterday morning that was wrong. He was not shot three times in the back. How many times was he shot? He was. He um, incurred one one shot wound. There were, but there were multiple casings found. There was more than one casing located. Yes. No, no. Um, they were um, bullet cartridges. They were ejected cartridges. Look, we no, we don't believe so. But um, but again, we're in, we're in a situation where we can't fill in the his movements in those number of hours immediately prior to the incident occurring. So we're not exactly sure what occurred. We have had some information coming from the public, which uh, tends to suggest to us that he was not walking down the road. Okay, but we don't know that for sure, and that's why we are still seeking um, any information from any member of the public who was on the road during that period between 2 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. And I mean anybody that was on the road, whether they were driving, whether they were walking, whether they were riding bikes or whatever. Um, so to help us um, build up that picture of, uh, of movement along that road. So any well, anybody that was on the road, driving along the road, walking along the road, or riding along the road, between those hours we would like to speak to. And uh, that will just allow us to work out the positions of different people. Some people have already come forward um, of having been on the road, and they've told us about other cars being on the road. So we would like those people to come forward as well. Are well, you leading towards the fact that he may have been <coughs> in a vehicle or has done? Well, we're not... We're not um, we're not um, speculating on anything at the moment. We're keeping all options open at the moment. But uh, again, we would appeal to anybody that was on um, Booker Boulevard between 2 a.m. and 2.30 a.m. between the Gold Coast Highway and Bermuda Street to uh, contact the police or crime stoppers. Well, so we understand it's early days, but can you tell us anything about what we might have been involved in getting involved in this situation? No. Um, you know, there are certain parts of the, the operational aspects that we don't want to discuss, but, but as I say, there is nothing at the moment that, uh, that is standing out significantly. We've got a number of avenues uh, of inquiry that we're following, but we don't have any solid leads. So, again, um, we have, uh, we're considering all actions. Was he robbed at all? His body like, watched this year? No indication of that, no. But you still you sound like it wasn't just a random thing. It sounds like he's still looking at it. wasn't the other. Well, we, we would hope that the investigation may determine what happened in the future. So we're looking at suggestions now that may be from the casino, from the river, from the circle, the paradox of the area? We're looking at all possibilities. Yep. We're looking at all possibilities at this stage. As I say, there's a number of hours there in the lead up to uh, his, um, his body being located that we want to fill in. And uh, we're quite, uh, quite convinced, quite confident that there's people out there who would know um, who may be able to provide that information to us. Uh, equally, we believe uh, there are people out there that just knew the victim. And as I say, he's only lived here since August of last year. Uh, we want to try to build up that picture, and uh, we would ask anybody who even knows the victim to uh, contact police so that we can have a talk to them. There's been no connection to OMCGs um, come to light as a part of this investigation. Drugs. There's been nothing to suggest that uh, drugs may have been involved um, in the um, homicide at this point in time. Uh, we have our ballistics people working on that, but that's something that we uh, we wouldn't want to uh, release anyway. Uh, the family describe well. The family describes him as a. Uh, Obviously, a good bloke, um, a loner, uh, a very private person. So you, you can categorically, just to make it triple clear, you can categorically rule out any link whatsoever to any sex crime. There is no evidence whatsoever to suggest that the victim was involved in any sexual offences 
that he was a pedophile or that he was involved in luring children, underage children, into pornography or prostitution. Has the crime scene been rich for you? The crime scene on this occasion is a little bit different to normal, being, uh, being out on the road. Um, uh, but um, as normal, our forensic specialists have done a thorough job and, um, and we're waiting for some results in the election. Any police divers used to Police divers um, are being utilised as a matter of course to, uh, to search the waterways. What's the potential weapon? For a weapon for anything of value. Well, they're back down to safety. Yeah. Nothing, you're just doing that as a routine thing, kind of as sort of indicated that something's happening there? Correct. Leave that down to safety. Uh, no, I'm sure they'll find a lot of things there. Yeah. Uh, the victim does have a family. Uh, the majority of his family is in New South Wales. Yes. This doesn't seem like you've got a whole big jump. It's sort of, is it family or is it, what are the big jumps here? Well, as I explained, um, we do have a number of avenues of inquiry that we are following, but we don't have any solid leads at this point. We still have a number of gaps, uh, particularly in relation to his movements, as I say. For that reason, we're appealing to the public, to any member of the public who even knew the victim, um, to come forward and contact the police. Yesterday you were saying innocent goalposters shouldn't be concerned because the deaths that have been occurring have been between, you know, Two groups or a domestic situation. Has that changed in the last 24 hours? No. No. Well, well, we don't know what what the uh, the situation is in relation to this um, incident at this time. But the situation hasn't changed in relation to all the previous incidents. Um, this one is yet to be determined. So he's obviously involved in something for this to happen to him, but you can't. You, you guys have got some idea, but you can't tell us, or you don't really want to tell us. We don't know what has occurred immediately prior to his death, and, uh, and that's why we are trying to fill in that gap from the time he left home until the time he was located. And again, I would uh, appeal to any member of the public who even knows the victim to contact the police or the crime stoppers. Wasn't wasn't unusual. Yeah, that would be in classes of as a job in the sports work industry. Uh suggestion is that there was an argument beforehand. Uh, some people said that they what they heard an argument for the the bank checks. Is that tally with what you're hearing? Uh well we're getting uh, versions obviously from a number of people in the area. And uh, some people have come forward, um, as was depicted on the media last night, and said that uh, they had, they did hear, hear, they hear, heard raised voices. Um, yeah. Okay. Thanks very much. The photo um, is 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 current as such. The We've had a bit of difficulty getting a photograph. Um, this photograph